Hi, today I'm tackling a beast of a topic which is the physics topic of electromagnets. Because it's such a large topic I've decided to kind of explain it in terms of exam technique and the sorts of questions that they'll ask and in terms of the sorts of information you need to be able to just kind of reiterate and I know that's horrible teaching but I think with this topic and it being as difficult as it is I think that's the best approach to take so bear with me. Let's start by looking at which metals are magnetic. Now there aren't very many of them. There's iron and then steel which contains iron and carbon. There's nickel and there's cobalt. Now the two we're mostly interested in are iron and steel and that's because we can divide them into a softly magnetic material and a hard magnetic material. A hard magnetic material is something which doesn't lose its magnetism very easily and our example for this is steel. However iron is kind of much more helpful because you can actually turn on its magnetism and then it loses it pretty much straight away. So we call that a soft magnetic material and it's good for use in big magnets, for example in scrapyards when you're moving cars around. You don't want a magnet which maintains its magnetism all the time because you just have the car stuck to the crane but if you can turn it on and off, you can lift up your car, move it, and then drop it again. So that's obviously really straightforward. Now, what do magnetic field lines show you? Well, first of all, they show you the shape of the magnetic field. Second of all, they tell you the direction of the magnetic field, which runs from north to the south pole. And then finally, they tell you how strong the magnetic field is, because the closer together those magnetic field lines are, the stronger the magnet. Now, a magnet is obviously something which attracts other things, and we can use those in everyday settings, but we're really interested when we're talking about this topic in electromagnets. So all you need is a current flowing through a wire and you create a magnetic field around the wire. And that's really the simplest form of electromagnet. And it is a very special scientific phenomenon. The fact that just by simply causing a current to flow along a wire will create an electromagnet and a magnetic field. So that's pretty special. There's always questions in exams in terms of how can you increase the strength of the magnetic field, how can you increase the strength of the electromagnet, and in this case, by turning that wire into a coil, otherwise known as a solenoid, you can increase the strength, um, so therefore adding more turns of coil, that will obviously increase the strength in the magnetic field even further. If you add a soft iron core to the middle, so you just thread that through the coil, then that will increase the strength, and obviously if you increase the current, you'll increase the strength of the magnetic field. Hi kitten, come say hi. She's feeling very, very sociable today, aren't you? Been asleep all morning. Oh, sit there. Now I'm gonna talk about something a bit more complicated which is to do with the motor. Remember the motor is simply something which spins and you'll use simple examples in the classroom and you'll use them in order to turn something. So a motor is something which spins and we use electromagnetism when creating our motors and this is where I'm going to introduce Fleming's left hand rule. Please don't panic about this, people hate it but it is quite straightforward if only you know how. First of all it's the left hand and you need to get your thumb, first finger and second finger in different planes to each other. Can you see that? They all at right angles to each other. Now the first thing you need to know is that the thumb indicates motion so in this situation the motion is going up. Now the first finger first finger magnetic field and people try and remember that by saying first finger field and then finally second finger current second current that's how people try to remember it and that will be showing the direction that the current will be flowing around the circuit so some questions will ask you the direction in which the coil will turn based on the direction of the magnetic field and the current so the way to do that is to line up your magnetic field and your current with the diagram so make sure that your magnetic field is going north to south based on the magnets and that your second finger is following the direction of the current which will be indicated on the diagram around the circuit and then when you have those two lined up you'll be able to work out which way the coil will be moving and that will it will be upwards if you can line it up this way but sometimes you need to turn it around and it will be going downwards but just make sure those fingers are lined up with the arrows on the diagram and I promise you can't go wrong. And your answer will be something like the coil moves up, the coil moves down. Now what's the role of the commutator? As the coil's moving, what would happen if they didn't exist is that the coil would move up and stay in position and the other side of the coil would move down and it would just shake and it wouldn't turn continuously. So they switch the current every half turn and that just ensures that the coil keeps rotating continuously. Then you have two brushes and all they do is they main if that if you're asked in the exam, they maintain contact between the electric circuit and the coil of wire. 
So the deal with this left hand rule is it's a bit like a physics triangle, formula triangle, which is if, if you have two of the components then you make the third component. So in a motor you have both the magnetic field and you have a current, so together they, they produce motion, which is the turning of the motor. Now you might have to draw a simple, simple diagram of electric motor and I'll try and draw one to show you for the exam. Um, the crucial thing is though that these are simple motors used in the classroom. In a practical environment you might need to add some details in terms of the fact that the magnets are replaced by electromagnets, the wire is turned into lots of coils and they sometimes add a soft iron core. So there's a bit of exam technique for you. Right, so we just said that if you have magnetic field and current you create motion. But what about if you have the magnetic field and you have motion? Well, based on a physics triangle type of thing, then that means you create current. And that, therefore, is our introduction to generators, because a generator is something which creates electricity. What is electricity? It's a flow of electrons, it's a current flowing. So therefore, if we have motion and we have magnetic field, we can create current. Now, in this situation, you use Fleming's right-hand rule, because you'll find that your hands will, won't line up properly if you use your left hand. But again, the thumb indicates motion, first finger magnetic field, second finger current. So if you move a wire at right angles to a magnetic field, then a voltage is induced and therefore current flows. And this phenomenon is known as electromagnetic induction. We can increase the size of the electromagnetic force by moving the wire more quickly, using a stronger magnet, and wrapping the wire into a coil. So very similar to all our other ways of increasing things. Now, we've said that a generator creates current. We can use this in everyday in things like a bicycle dynamo. Now all that means is when you pedal, you can create electricity in order to power your light. So as you pedal, you turn the magnets and then magnetic field lines cut through a coil and this induces a current and the current is used to power the lights. So that's a really good everyday use of generators. Now what is an alternator? An alternator is something which produces alternating current. And all an alternating current is, is current which flows first in one direction, then in another direction. The frequency of an alternating current is the number of complete cycles which are made per second. As I said, this topic is really long and it is complicated. I'm going to create another video on transformers because they're slightly more tricky again. I really hope you found that helpful. I really did try to give you a summary of all the key things you'd need in the exam to make sure you score those marks. Because remember, most people find this topic exceptionally difficult. So it's a really good place to gain marks where everyone else is using them. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you guys soon. So a motor is something which spins and we use electromagnetism when creating our motors and this is where I'm going to introduce Fleming's left hand rule. Please don't panic about this, people hate it, but it is quite straightforward if only you know how. First of all it's the left hand and you need to get your thumb, first finger and second finger in different planes to each other. Can you see that? They're all at right angles to each other. Now the first thing you need to know is that the thumb indicates motion, so in this situation the motion is going up. Now the first finger, first finger magnetic field, and people try and remember that by saying first finger field, which is simply a way of trying to remember something which is quite difficult. And then finally second finger current, second current, that's how people try to remember it, and that will be showing the direction that the current will be flowing around the circuit.